Hi, um, I'm Karinza Cadenas. I'm an editor for uh, New York Magazine's Le Cut, and I'm going to be moderating the Q&A with Celine Sciamma, the director and writer of this amazing film. Hey. So, um, congratulations on your opening weekend and this amazing crowd who came to join us. Where did the idea kind of come from for you? So the film was written um, with Brittany in mind, uh, a former girlfriend of mine. That's when he said, okay. <laughs> I'm a funny person, you can tell, but it's like, <laughs> I'm going to crack jokes all the time. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> no. For this specific, <laughs> specific <laughs> place in Brittany, because uh, I wanted those cliffs, I wanted those beautiful beaches, and it's basically a, um, a coast that is untouched, you know, that is preserved. Um, and so you would definitely believe it, it, it is in the past. You know, you don't have to erase anything um, in post production, uh, except surfers, <laughs> who are really like, like all people who believe that they are free. I really don't give a fuck about other people's freedom. <laughs> <laughs> like really, I hate surfers now. <laughs> um, that was a budget, um, and the castle uh, is actually in the mm, in the Parisian banlieue, periphery, uh, like uh, 50 kilometers from Paris. And it was the most difficult thing to find the castle because you visit basically a lot of castle. France has a lot of castle <laughs> um, b where people get married, uh, and so it's like uh, you have this kind of fake thing and it's been painted and repainted and like for instance it's always th like the wood the wood the wood wall are, are always bicolor and, and they're always like and we found that castle that was like basically crawling uh, and that was not touched for centuries so the wood of the wall is like the natural wood of the 18th century and the color was there and we didn't touch that color so it's actually and it didn't it, it it felt like it belonged to the film already and that it was kind of the color that was mirroring my previous choices in uh, around color on in my previous film. So that was kind of, um, that was a meeting with a place that was vibing with past. And I like to to construct my sets, like even if it's the, 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 uh, the bedrooms of teenage girls uh, <laughs> in contemporary uh, Paris, I, I, I like it to, to, to build it, to choose every color. But this this time, and it's a period piece, so it should be reconstitution. We we did very, very, we did nothing, basically. The place was like waiting for us. Wow, that's amazing, especially because, you know, I think in terms of like working with uh, your cinematographer, like just like, it's just so epic looking. You know, what was like building that relationship with uh, her? Um, well, I've been wanting to work with her for a long time. I've been always very careful about her, her work. Um, and um, we, well, we met on that script, and um, and basically we worked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and having also that strong decision to give a lot of time and also money, which is kind of the same in cinema, um, for her to craft this lighting. Um, that famous castle, that the castle that was perfect, was the first floor, and it was very old, so you couldn't hang any lighting in there. So the rooms, there was the lightings, they the, all the, the the projectors. Is that the word? Yeah. yeah, the lamps and everything. They weren't in the room; they were outside. We built this very big scale, um, and all the lighting were outside. And 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 it took like for each scene, we would they would, it would take two to three hours sometimes to set the lighting, which would drive me crazy. But I'm a smoker, so I can wait. <laughs> um, no, but it means that it's time you're not, you're, you're gonna have less time with your actors. So it's like, you know, when I'm asked, how do you make it beautiful? Well, it's, it's the time you're gonna put into your ideas. Um, we talked a lot about paintings, ob obviously, we went to the museum, <laughs> um, but mostly to, to decide how we were gonna shoot painting as a work, uh, as a moment of work. Um, and um, yeah, yeah well I'm trying to make short answers so that we can talk about yeah. the thing. <laughs> 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 well, what was uh, making and working, uh, sorry, doing the, making sure that Noemi and Adele had chemistry, because obviously this is a movie that's just a lot of longing lesbian looks, which is ideal, personally speaking, but um, 
is <laughs> is is also you know that's just chemistry you can't just fake you know to a that, that oh, degree oh you can <laughs> <laughs> i mean <laughs> i mean it's cinema so it's not that you can it's that you should <laughs> you should um you know the, the 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 argument of the fact that you know chemistry should happen on a set that you should fall in love with whoever you're looking at this this has been causing a lot of trouble <laughs> this 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 was propaganda for rape basically um so no it's a job and we are very good at this job <laughs> and it's not about that it, well, of course it's about their working relationship um and the fact that they would also not very know not, not know each other very well uh, and we kept it that way they didn't rehearse so they were ca always kind of surprised as how thing things would go like how was going to send uh, they, they always said like it's it was like Noemi says like Heather was like handing her little balls and she they were like, uh, she they were catching and she would never know how she was or she would throw the ball, um, and so there was kind of that tension, um, and also it's mostly ideas and being very accurate about those ideas. It means, for instance, how you would breathe. Like for instance, how do you show somebody has desire for somebody for the first time? So we are looking at Noemi Merlon's face and she she paints and. I let her do a little choreography of looks, and at some point I'm like, now. And she poses, and she gives this, and I'm like, open your mouth, and she opens her mouth. And that's how you create the choreography of, of chemistry and desire. It's being very accurate, and they are very good actors, so they are very much in control of their, also their, f their, f their face as, um, as, as their muscles, you know? It's their athlete. Um, and they were, and they're really good athletes. So, and they, I think they they cared a lot about the film. It's about the film that they cared. It's not about each other or whatever, you know. Well, they both and have very. They like cases. each other very much. I don't <laughs> want to like. like <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to ask. I think one of the most. I mean, the film is so beautiful, but one of the most beautiful shots is, I think, the one with the mirror when she's drawing herself. What was like kind of the inspiration for that? Well, I was thinking about this American photographer who actually committed suicide at 26 because she didn't get into an art show, whose name is... Oh. <laughs> oh no, I can't forget her name. Is there somebody has it? Angelica, she was a New Yorker. Angelica Woodman? Angelica Woodman? Francesca? Francesca Woodman. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> she did a lot of this thing with mirrors and shadows, and I was very moved by her work. And also, you know, the film talks about women artists at the in the 18th century, but globally, there's, there's the destiny and the journey of women artists. And I felt like she had done things with mirror, and I, uh, I like her work, and I thought, I want to do something with a mirror. She hadn't specifically done this. And it was playful with the idea of, uh, you know, we, we keep... Uh, playing with this cycle of, of uh, this round between the model and the artist and who's posing and who's in charge and who's looking at who and like this. Mm, I just, we just push, push the limit and what if the mirror was there and that you would, and, and so it's also uh, about, yeah, harvesting a situation, being generous about it and also thinking it's, it's gonna be f also fun. I think it's, it's an image that's disturbing and, and fun and, mm, and yeah. yeah. Mm? Um, I I read an interview with you recently about people, or like maybe critics specifically, calling it a queer story when it's very obviously a lesbian it story. Happens, I was wondering yeah. if you would talk about that a little bit. Well, in France, it's not even queer. It's like une histoire d'amour entre deux femmes, which sounds really sexy when I say it, but it's just like <laughs> 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 that's that's French. It sounds like that, but. Um, that is like a love story between two women, so it's not even qualified. I mean, and it's not about qualifying their love story. It's quali I think it's also about qualifying the politics, the aesthetics, and the politics of the film. Um, so I guess here, lesbian is much more popular as a word than in France. So I found it already, but it's just no. Yeah, just yeah. It seems to be a word that is that kind. It's kind of scary, and I think because. I mean, the program is, is scary, it's, it's a threat to to a system. And yet that's why we're so often despised, that's why we're so often killed in films or you know, treated as also, I don't know, being like a crazy person, um, craving for possession, and you know, 
the film is shows that we are not craving for possession. We are craving for a lot of things. But uh, so I yeah, I think that's why there's a threat around the world. But you know, we read I'd rather be a threat than a fashion. <laughs> Um, I think we have some time to take a couple questions from the audience. Uh, hi, um, I really love this film. It's the second time I've watched it and it has been a big inspiration creatively to me. And something I think about a lot is the dialogue and the writing. So I wanted to ask you, uh, how do you approach your writing and when do you know you have written something good, something worth working on? Well, on this film particularly, I mean, I've been evolving from film to film. And this one, it took me five years to craft it. I'm not going to say write it, but really think about it, you know? Uh, mostly because I like trying to find a new, a new way to write for myself. Um, knowing that I would be directing the film, and I hope that's what you want to do. Okay. Um, and I did, there was two levels of new reflection. The first one was because I'm more deconstructed than before, you know. And the first level was like trying to depart from the uh, narrative of conflict, uh, the fact that a good scene is a good bargain, uh, and to not rely on that kind of tension. Um, and the second layer was most also concerning the fact that I would direct this. And it's about trying to have and it, you know, you can get lost in the process because you know cinema is really heavy. There's a lot of people. It depends on the weather. What did you, what did you add at lunch? Like you know, you. So you have to believe very strongly in what you do. So because it's got a lot of money, so there's a lot of pressure. So there c might be a lot of compromise to do. You should do them, but you should know where to do them. And so really, it's about filling the scenes with ideas you care about and with a lot of desire. And you have to be very clear about what you desire. It's, there's no mystery for you in what you want in that image. Some, and it can be several things. It can be the color of the wall for this special location that you think is going to be really, uh, like that you like, but it can really be like, it's what you want to do with each scene so that you don't get lost in the process. And if you can't manage to write a scene with a strong desire, as, as with a strong idea in it for yourself, get rid of it. Never do these things. You know, don't create handle for yourself. Don't do that scene where, oh, people won't understand if she's not taking the car. And that's why like, the film is like 69 sequences. It's two hours long still, but it's 69 is not much. I mean, usually a film is like 120. And it's like I was really trying to don't make a scene about like she's opening the door and going to the kitchen. Like, what happens if? And, and see what it produces. I mean, Go through the steps you need to your for your story. Look at those steps. Try try to fill them, and you know if after years or months or weeks of thinking you you can't manage to do that, it means like don't do it. Don't do that scene. So I'm really thinking a script as architecture of desires, and especially for this one, it was a film about desire. And if you want to know more about this, I did a lecture for BAFTA on BAFTA Guru, and it's all written down about how I like to write. And it's kind of this, but you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Mm? Thank you. Hi. Hi again. Again. <laughs> um, uh, we were talking about the elements yesterday, and uh, that was a different. It was a little bit different question, but um, I, I we've it's, this is this film is hugely discussed online every day by me and a small group of people, and. Um, somebody was saying how, I, and I'm just wondering if it was intentional, how Marianne seems to be like um, kind of more commanding of the elements. She's the one that's lighting the pipe all the time, and she's the one that's jumping in the water and, and all this stuff, whereas Eloise seems to just kind of like go with whatever. Like she doesn't do anything when she's on fire, and you know she goes in the ocean and just goes with it or whatever. So I'm wondering if that was intentional or what, you know. Oh, I'm not saying it that way at all. Like, Eloise is the one say, you should look at the abortion because we're going to paint this, for instance. Uh, she's going to swim into that water willingly, whereas Marion steps in because she has to save, basically, uh, what she's going to make a living out of. So, convention of action is like, 
jumping in the water and because like, oh, there's a danger. So she's maybe in a very conventional way, you would look at her as the active character. Um, but everybody's a top. Because <laughs> that's a question I get a lot. We hate this idea of tops and whatever not top. Like, come on, this is so... <laughs> no. I know. <laughs> I know that was the hidden secret in your the <laughs> hidden agenda of that question. <laughs> this is no, therapy, there, there you know. There really wasn't. I just, I just wondered because <laughs> some so some girl that's actually really respectful and always has good ideas brought that up, and I thought that's a good question, actually. <laughs> Um, well, I don't think we can take another question because literally that's the best answer we're going to ever get. So thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. Um, tell everyone to come see this amazing film. Thank you. And thank you for Celine.